According to a 2019 United States trade report, China continues to be the world's leading source of counterfeit goods. That same year, Chinese telecom giants Huawei and ZTE were listed by the US government for being a national threat. ZTE, we closed it. These companies are dangerous to our national security and to your privacy. Huawei and ZTE are nothing more than extensions of the Chinese Communist Party. Currently, both companies are leading the global 5G equipment manufacturing race and they made their presence felt strongly across Europe. This caused ripples across the US as these manufacturers also have a decent presence in those markets as well. But the sanctions from the US on Chinese companies is not just any trade deal maneuver. The problem extends far beyond the economic aspect. Uh, we're already a cyborg. Something more profound than electricity or fire. Alter ego software. We are limited by slow biological evolution. For many decades, Chinese companies, or China in general, have been accused of stealing technology from their Western counterparts, and so far, as per claims, the United States of America has been the biggest victim of this relentless espionage of technology. Ru Pon Li, a Chinese billionaire often dubbed as Elon Musk of China, is the founder of Quan Chi, a multi-billion dollar company that deals with AI and other advanced technology. Lu, however, has been accused of stealing technology from Duke University during his student days. Professor who invented special invisibility technology learned his research walked out the door with one of his Chinese grad students. That student now a tech billionaire. He now operates out of Shenzhen, the tech hub that is spearheading China's race to become a global tech behemoth. In 2004, Cisco Systems took Huawei to court for stealing its core router software code and using it in Huawei routers. These routers, widely used in China and Europe, have played a key role in Huawei's growth into a $95 billion global telecom equipment giant. In 2011, AMC filed the largest ever IP theft case in a Chinese court seeking $1.2 billion in compensation for their losses. In 2015, the federal government charged six Chinese citizens with stealing wireless communications technology from two Silicon Valley microchip makers, Avago and Skyworks, and launching their own company to sell that technology in China. Intellectual property theft is not new to the corporate world. But China keeps coming in the news. So why is this so exclusive to China? Until 1978, China had been a majorly agrarian, inward-looking nation. After the economic reforms introduced that year, China grew by leaps and bounds in the next four decades. It is now the world's second largest economy, next only to the United States of America. So far, China has been playing catch-up with the developed nations in the West. But now, for the first time, it has a chance to truly reign supreme on the back of new technologies like AI. The country filed more than 30,000 public patents for AI in 2018, a roughly tenfold jump in five years and about 2.5 times more than the US, which it surpassed in 2015. In a study done by China's Tsinghua University, it was found that in 2017, the international AI talent pool comprised 2,4575 individuals, with the United States having 28,536 such individuals and China in second place with 18,232. Though researchers like Schmidt Huber argue that deep learning shouldn't be patented, the ongoing patent frenzy by companies like Baidu has also alerted its American contemporaries. Last year, there have been two instances where Google was in the news for patenting AI. As top companies race to patent AI to avoid IP theft, there are risks of AI stagnation in the community, which benefits tremendously from open source applications. According to the Tsinghua University study of China's AI ecosystem, more than half of China's AI papers were international joint publications. The fact that many of the top innovations are in collaboration with the Chinese 
adds to the United Nations accusations of a potential information leak. This also happens to be the bone of contention in the ongoing trade war between the nations. The Chinese government, however, dismisses allegations of strong arming as utterly unfounded, describing any exchanges as voluntary and conducted on market principles. The Chinese Premier had also responded to the demands of transparency by saying that they won't allow other nations to dictate the Chinese policy. While it does not possess any of the world's most advanced equipment manufacturing companies, China has strong negotiating leverage with foreign companies due to the size and growth of its domestic market. Semiconductor manufacturing equipment sales in China represented 11.8% of the global market in 2017 but is expected to grow in 2019 to 25.6%. China also has successfully recruited many workers and executives from leading Taiwanese semiconductor companies, including SMIC's new co-CEO, who has a documented history of stealing intellectual property. Although many U.S. firms enter into joint venture agreements with Chinese partners, their loss of IP is usually a result of foreign companies not doing their due diligence or feeling compelled for financial reasons to take the risk of entering the agreement without proper IP protection. And since global dominance has been the de facto theme of many of the Chinese government's major initiatives in the last couple of decades, it is critical to make sure the world does not hand over the future to a single nation. For instance, according to China Standards 2035, they plan on writing international rules for the technologies that will be used in the future, from AI to IoT. While the Chinese vows to tighten the screws on the espionage of ideas, it also pushes for an indigenous AI supremacy that would finally give credibility to Made in China. Top AI companies and research labs across the world, however, should be wary of the past and frame their IP policies more diligently. AI's ramifications for the future of human development are profound. The first step in maximizing the widespread benefit of AI, while addressing ethical, legal and regulatory challenges, is to create a common factual basis for understanding artificial intelligence. And the last thing the world needs right now is a Chinese monopoly over AI.